Have you ever wondered if your organization is hiring practices fully validate employees before bringing them on board, or questioned whether your finance team's access to payments data is too unrestricted? Welcome back to our Crotches Technology College. In today's video, we're going to dive into critical personnel and HR-related controls like background checks, segregation of duties, mandatory vacation policies, and more. Let's dive in. When bringing new employees into your organization, implementing background checks should be one of the first areas you look at to strengthen personnel security. I know the idea of running background checks may initially give some people pause. Do I really need to background check every single new hire? But consider this, one bad hire into a sensitive role like finance, IT, or leadership can end up costing an organization enormously, both financially and reputationally, and often negative incidents trace back to inadequately screening candidates up front. Thoroughly vetting all new hires, especially those assuming privileged positions, provides valuable assurance that the employees coming on board are who they claim to be on paper. Comprehensive background screens allow you to validate resume details like work history, education, professional certifications, and more. Without proper checking, it's far too easy for someone to falsify or misrepresent their qualifications to get a job. And you certainly don't want to find out three months after hiring that your new controller never actually had the CPA license listed on their resume. Just as importantly, background checks also uncover any concerning criminal history or past misconduct that would be relevant for certain roles. If you hire someone into an accounts receivable position without screening for it, and it turns out they have multiple past convictions for theft and fraud, you are practically inviting trouble inside your doors. Proper due diligence during hiring aligns candidate risk profiles with role sensitivity. Now, background check laws and regulations vary greatly, so be sure to consult professionals like legal counsel and HR when implementing a program. You need to understand relevance requirements, adverse action procedures, consent rules, and more based on geographies. Not every single role necessarily requires extensive FBI-level vetting either. You can tier check types and depths proportionally based on access to sensitive assets. But at minimum, foundational background checks should become standard practice across all new hires. They provide that crucial upfront validation to avoid obvious oversights or issues down the line that any prudent employer would want to know about. Beyond validating candidates initially, you can also consider occasionally rerunning screens for higher risk existing employees to stay current on any emerging criminal issues. Some companies offer ongoing monitoring or continuous checking services as well, which automate this. Just keep in mind, ongoing checks introduce additional privacy considerations to factor in. Okay, this next one might sound counterproductive, forcing employees to take vacation time, but hear me out. Mandatory vacation policies are actually a smart detective control for identifying malicious behavior. The key benefit is that they force cross-training and turnover. When Charles is out for two weeks sipping margaritas, someone else has to step into his role and handle his work. And that change in personnel allows the organization to identify any misconduct Charles may have been committing under the radar. Say, Charles in accounting has been slowly embezzling money, but he's cleverly masked it with a complex scheme that's hard to spot when he's there. With mandatory vacation, his peer steps into the role and is more likely notice something amiss with the accounts. Bingo, you've detected the fraud. This control is most relevant in repetitive operational roles like accounts receivable, payable, payroll, inventory management, etc. Anywhere, a single person has enough continuity to hide small misdeeds. Mandating a week or two of vacation essentially foils that continuity. And for this to work, employees really need to vacate fully. Hand off access tokens, tie up loose ends, and cut out completely. If there's email checking in from the beach, you undercut the control. Next up, segregation of duties. This one's all about dividing high risk or sensitive tasks across multiple roles or people. The goal is ensure no single employee can independently carry out an end-to-end -end process that's susceptible to misuse. For example, three key steps in a common procure-to-pay process are issuing a purchase requisition. This involves creating and submitting a request for a purchase that details the items or services needed and their business justification. Approving the requisition. Before moving forward with a purchase, the requisition is reviewed and approved by someone with proper financial authority, like a department manager. Processing the payment. Once the purchase is fully executed and confirmed received, the accounts payable team processes payment to the vendor according to the approved requisition terms. 
If a single employee could perform all three steps independently, they could easily create and approve their own fake purchase order, then process payment to themselves. Allowing a single person to requisition, approve, and make payments concentrates risk and control within one individual. Common ways to divide duties include system access controls, independent approvals, and even physical access restrictions. For instance, the payroll manager can prepare payroll in the system, but needs the CFO to approve it before funds get dispersed. Analyze each critical business process to identify where concentrated duties may exist, then redistribute as needed to control risk. This is essential fraud prevention and compliance that's easy to implement once you know where the gaps are. Segregation splits high-risk tasks across distinct roles. The next control, dual controls, engages two or more parties to approve or execute a single transaction. For example, you might require two sign-offs on disbursement checks over $50,000, or cash deposits may need to be verified against the ledger by two staff before getting booked. The core idea is critical transactions have oversight from multiple angles before they happen. You can also require 4i review on actions like pay rate changes, sensitive data deletions, new vendor setups, and more. And two eyes can become three eyes for very high risk transactions like large wire transfers. With an originator, a reviewer, and an approver, the key is that the reviewers provide thoughtful, independent validation not just a rubber stamp, define specific steps they must take to review. Also, build in audit trails and accountability so you know who reviewed, authorized, and executed each transaction. Some people resist the perceived inefficiency of dual control, but for sensitive tasks, it significantly raises the difficulty for a would-be bad actor, while also improving quality. Very worthwhile. The last area I want to highlight is training. It's easy to focus on the technical controls only to neglect building employee skills and knowledge on policies, tools, risks, and secure practices. Start by laying a foundation with security awareness training during onboarding. Refresh periodically through lunch and learns, newsletter blasts, reminder emails, and so on. Repetition and reinforcement are key. From there, complement general awareness with function-specific training. Explain data classifications, acceptable use policies, access management protocols, and other operational controls tied to each role. Where highly specialized skills are needed, like secure coding, provide more formalized certifications and role-based education. Third parties like contractors also need training before granting access or assigning work. Include mandatory training in contracts and validate understanding. What are one to two key risk areas where we could implement better segregation of duties or dual controls? How can we make security training more engaging and effective long term? Let me know in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our Karat GS Technology College to learn more about actionable security controls.